Hello, everyone. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, 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 hello. I bought new lipstick. Well, first of all, before I go into some random conversation that doesn't even need to be happening is not important with the human evolution, but we'll talk about it anyways. Welcome to Untangled. Uh, we're on episode 85. For those of you that have never heard of my um, Untangled episode, Untangled series, I started it about two and a half years ago because I wanted to talk about not just the uh, unravelings of the dark shadowy stuff that's happening on the planet and um, what the governments are doing and what this is doing and all the different uh, stories that we see in the world. But I wanted to talk more importantly about what we are going through internally, um, the untangling of our own internal uh, battles, because that is truly the only way through. We cannot change an entire human collective. You cannot change the systems that you are in if you do not first change uh, what is happening internally. It's just not, it's just how it works. Um, and so every week or every week that I try to show up, uh, I discuss my own personal experiences and um, the way it re relates to the collective's um, evolution and the way the collective is evolving into these new ways of being or higher states of consciousness while still standing in a very physical reality. And it's profound. It's absolutely profound what we are doing. And more than anything, each week is my prayer is that each week is just a deeper activation of remembrance within you of what you're doing here on the planet, because each one of us here right now watching this, we all have our own individual unique experiences that we are going through, whether it's a relationship or a job or money or illness, um, uh, fear around something. I don't know. There's all kinds of different stuff, right? Juggling jobs and, and kids and whatever. But when we come together once a week and remember that although my situation may be different than your situation, I guarantee you that we are still navigating the same types of energies. And uh, and that's what's so beautiful and that's what's so profound about this, uh, this human experience right now. So thank you for being in here right now with me, Astrid, Peter, Mona, Jane, Barbara, Suzanne, Alexis, Kit, Angel, Makiko. Beautiful Truth, MC, Itu, Emerald, Rachel, Sabine, Marlene, Sam. It's really, really good to be here with you guys. Hi, Jill. Before I get going, I'm out of my coffee. <laughs> I'm out of my coffee. Does anybody get to the very last sip? Like they literally look and it's like, that's... That's my last, that's my last, I have no coffee left. I want to cry. <laughs> but then I purposely don't buy more coffee because I don't want more coffee because then it's not good for my system. But then when my coffee runs out, I'm like, I really wish I had more coffee. By the way, I bought a espresso maker, a Breville for my birthday, a really nice, expensive Breville espresso maker uh, for my birthday, which was, you would think, I don't know, sometime in April probably, right? No, my birthday was February 9th. I bought it February 6th or 7th. Um, how many times have I used it? Twice. When I used it those two times, did I actually drink the coffee? No, because it was shit. I didn't know how to make it. It was too watery. I messed it up, which is part of the reason why I was waiting two and a half months to finally make one because I literally don't know how to do anything with any machines. Anywho, so that's just a s small little snippet. Um, so before we get going, I want to just say a couple of things. First, um, first I'm going to do some homework and then I'm going to get into like the more human collective human experience that's happening on the planet right now. First, like I said on my Instagram, we are four days away, three days away from my in-person workshop. You cannot get tickets online. This is in-person only. It's a small, intimate group of people. 
in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. And as I've been getting closer and closer to the retreat, not only has a lot of information come in, and it's going to be a very kind of what I will, I'll use the term galactic. There is a lot of higher dimensional energy that is going to be with us. And um, they've already been to telling me like, do this in the room and do this in the room and put this here. And they're just kind of already showing me how to prepare for this. And when they do that, and that's very rare that this happens, when, but when they do, I know that they are the ones that are wanting to come in and communicate um, more than me. And so I get a little giddy because I know that there's, that there's going to be so much more energy than just us there. So anywho, there is a link in the description. If by some random chance you are wanting to do a quick a car ride to North Carolina or a flight, you will not be disappointed. It's three days, the 19th, 20th, 21st. There's incredible people already coming. And um, it's going to be life-changing in, in every way. Um, my body has been getting prepared the last couple of days. Um, yeah, it's just going to be pretty, pretty spectacular. And don't worry, because this foundational kind of stamp that I'm creating with this workshop, I will be taking elsewhere around the world. Um, it's like a foundational type of platform that's created with the Galactics that I'll be sharing. So I will be coming to Europe and I will be coming to Australia and all the other places in Africa. I will be doing a retreat in Africa. Africa for sure, probably around January. So definitely stay tuned and start saving your money if you want to do Africa because it will be expensive, but we're doing Africa. Um, all right. So I, oh, I got new. So that's, that's my work. That's my housekeeping. Um, and I want to just set a prayer today as we're opening up and speaking and connecting and communicating. And also, please hit the thumbs up button if you do like this video um, as you're watching it and you're like, you know what? I like what Lori's saying. Hit the thumbs up button because my YouTube channel has been stagnant for over two years. It has not grown, which is all good by me because as long as I am in my service work, I am good. Um, but it would be nice to get the videos out to more humans um, and to grow this channel. So if you like this video, push the thumbs up. And if you know anyone that would benefit from these videos, just share it. Okay, so there's a lot going on on the planet. There are shootings that I've been hearing about. There are the bombs that went into Israel, but I think they got stopped. I do not listen to any kind of news right now, um, mainly because my body cannot handle it. I can, I can barely go outside and like do fun normal functioning things. It's my system is on overload right now because of the energies. It just is what it is. So it's hard for me to even consume any information. Even if somebody sends me a quick little, you know, reel, it's just hard for me to hold it in. But I do want to just set a prayer and an intention as we come together right now that um, the change that humanity is asking for without knowing that it's asking for it uh, starts within our own um, compassion itself. It starts within our own um, brave uh, willingness to keep our eyes open and to, to continue to see and to see through the eyes of compassion um, as much as we possibly can and to see all sides of what's unraveling and the pain on all sides to start holding that perspective more and more and to really to to keep your heart so open right now um that it's going to break you know and to and to be okay with that and i think that's part of why you have been doing so much inner work is because you've broken so many times internally you'll be more prepared to break externally when things get really intense and things get really tough, perhaps. Um, 
because what's happening as a human collective on an energetic level is that as light increases on a physical body that we call a planet, um, shadow is seen. And the way that shadow gets cleared or shadow shifts or changes is that those that were participating in more of the shadow work, you can call it like the evil stuff or whatever, you, you know, the, the manipulation, the child trafficking, um, the uh, really disruptive AI stuff that's coming out. Anything that is not for the highest good of humanity that frees all humans, um, the humans or the not so uh, not so human humans, the reptilian energies, they will eventually uh, check out or tap out. And the reason that they're checking out or tapping out is because the frequency on the planet is increasing and the light is shining on them. And so many times we say to ourselves, well, how are we going to get through this? How are we going to stop these systems? We have to go in and we have to destroy them. And, and many, many times what you're going to start to see, and this has only just begun, we've only just begun the dismantling of systems, really, truly, in, in, a, in a very, in a much more physical way. What, what you're going to notice is that it's by it's by us being in the light frequencies that we need to be in, which is compassion, understanding, um, humility, uh, boundaries, speaking truth, um, keeping your heart open, keeping your eyes open, allowing yourself to break down, allowing yourself to see it all, allowing yourself to drop um, and if you, and, and this truly is, thank you so much, Martin, as every week for your super chat. Um, this will allow for those individuals that have been playing in the shadow an opportunity to have the light shined on them. And when that light is shined on them, whether it's from us shining it or just from the collective frequency on the planet, there are opportunities for them to tap out. Whether they just stop what they're doing, whether they literally exit off the planet, there's all kinds of ways in which these energies will leave. And when I was writing my book, my book, The Divine Design, if you have not read the book, it's an incredible book. It's called The Divine De Design. Torsten, thank you for that super chat. What they said to me, um, we, when I did my chapter on the reptilians, um, what they said to me was, was because, um, if you read the book back in the 19, but there were about 40 years, 40 linear years, this is co totally going off subject for a second, but stay with me for about 40 years from about 19, no longer than that, about 1920s to around 1980, 1980, um, The Galactic Federation of Light uh, started pulling these um, reptilians out of the human body. And it's not easy to do that. So in pulling them out of the human body, they pulled them off the planet. And they were only able to pull around 80%, 85% of them. And when they were, and when I was writing the book with them, I was, I was like, why not the, the other 15%? And they said, well, because too much of the galactic uh, too much of the reptilian energy. Thank you so much, Thogori, for that super chat. Um, too much of the galact, uh, too much of the reptilian energy was inside the human body, and it could damage the actual soul and physical form. And they didn't want to injure that actual human. So there's a soul inside, right? And so they only were able to pull off about 80, 85% of the reptilians. And I said, well, how are the rest of the reptilians going to get off the damn freaking planet? And sorry, this didn't happen from the 19, this happened thousands of years ago. I apologize. This happened thousands of years ago. They pulled them off thousands, thousands of years ago. And um, I said, okay, well, how are they going to get them off the rest of the 15%? And they said, uh, the light work that the humans are going to be doing, 
the light work is going to do it. And I said, well, what do you mean the light work? And they said, the amount of light that each human is going to hold and the amount of light that the, the physical body is going to hold will naturally kick them off the planet. And I didn't really understand what they meant. I still don't quite exactly understand how it's going to unravel, but they said it will literally kick them off the planet. So they, they won't even be able to stand on this planet, be in this planet when the frequency continues to rise. So whether that's somebody kills them, whether that's they all of a sudden realize, oh my God, I'm, I can't do this anymore. And they, and they kill themselves, whether it's that they just sh shift and do something completely different, whether, I don't know what it's, how it's going to unravel because this has never happened before. But that's what's going to start to happen. So, yeah, we may see it as like, you know, more and more um, big companies come out and say dot, 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 or we may see people dying or what, however it looks like. I don't know. But it's going to be a, a very long time, years and years and years. You're looking at ten over 10 years, 15 years minimum for this stuff to start to really unravel. Um, and so anyway... Um, I'm not exactly sure why I brought that up. Oh, I would think I was talking about what we're going through right now on the planet. Um, and the the importance of recognizing that it's not an outside job. You know, this has everything to do with how you are navigating your internal world. And that has an impact, of course, on how the external world is being experienced by you. It's like a, it's a domino effect. Oh, I would know I was talking about it because the galactics were coming in for my workshop and they've been all around me, which I never have them around me like this. Um, so it's been really interesting. I've been, as many of you know, if you watch my Instagram maybe even my YouTube, but my Instagram for more, more, more than, or, or my, if you're on my mailing list, my newsletter, you know that um, I've been going through a lot the last couple of months, uh, a lot. It has been, it's been a lot. Um, I've been in like some real dark depressive states. I've been in some real mind thought form places where I was taken down some really dark, dark, um, alleyways in my mind. Um, I, yeah, it was, it was heavy. It was intense, um, exhaustion, sleeping for quite some time. Um, really not feeling like I was on the planet, that I was here. And yet I knew that I was here having feelings of like, what do I even want to do? How am I even going to just be in joy? I just want to serve and be in peace. Starting to really not want to be in the the realm of how people show up and do work now, you know, and following the trends and following the ways in which, you know, that I didn't want to do. So I was just watching all these things unravel for myself and trying to figure out where I fit in, trying to figure out where where I am in all of this, because none of it makes sense anymore. I don't want to play in any of it. I don't want to participate in any of it. I want to find joy through service work um, in my own lane. And, and I kept praying these last couple of months, like, I just want to be in my highest work serving humanity. And I want to be in joy serving humanity, like, just show me that. And my intention was, especially when I started Align 7.0, which we started 18 days ago, and you can still join. It's an incredible class. My intention for Align 7.0 was to be able to, to walk in a blind trust. Be, and to, for me, what that means to walk in blind trust is that I don't ever need to know where I'm going or how it's going to look. I just want to have the, the trust to be able to just go in the direction that I am being moved to go into, even if I can't see where, or I can't see why, or I don't have an answer for it. I just know that this is what feels most aligned. It doesn't make sense. How am I going to make money? Like where, what if I go and then it doesn't turn out the right, the way I'm supposed to. And, and, I just keep coming back to 
blind trust over and over. And the more that I am holding that as my way of being, as my intention to live, um, the more I am trusting me. And this world is going to do everything it can to get you to think like everybody else. It needs this world. And I, when I say this world, I'm speaking about the way there, you know, there are conditioned realities, programs that um, a very small group of people have been able to build into these very large systems that work and keep humanity in a more of a robotic sort of way of being. And it's grown and it's grown and it's grown over the years. But now, you know, we, if it's easy for us, we'll do it, right? If it's, if we don't have to think much about it, we'll do it. Um, anything that makes it easier for humanity, humanity is going to do it. And um, and a lot of these things are governed by uh, humans that have been, or non-humans that have been running the, the world for quite some time. And what that does is it, cre it creates not only the disempowerment, but it moves you into a kind of a group think. It moves you into the the, the shepherd you, shepherding you into um, being like all the other cows. You just walk this way, you do this, you do that. If you're like me and you work in social media and on social media, you'll really see that right now, right? They dictate your kind of like how you're going to do your content and whether it's going to be popped out into the algorithm or not. And you can do it this way, but don't say these words. And so it's, it's becoming more and more difficult to really find your absolute truth, your true North. And in, in a world that is designed to keep you in a boxed way of thinking and being so that you can be in a more controlled state. And when that happens, you feel like you're in more control. But what's happening right now is you are being pummeled out of that system, out of all the systems. And so you have to find your own new sea legs. You're finding your new sea legs and you're like, wait a second, how do I do this? Nobody's showing me. No one's guiding me. Nobody around me is saying, oh, I've done that. And you just need to do dot, dot, dot. Very few people are um, stepping out of uh, old, old, old systems um, and and courageously trusting that absolute resonance and true north of how they want to do it because the systems are set up in such a magnificent way that it's comfortable, right? And so how can you trust you'll be financially taken care of when you just simply followed your joy, which is your which is what your soul wants? Um, you know, and, there are, there are people that have done it and they're very, very successful. And they will say, I followed my joy. I believed it. And I think that for us right now to be in the highest service to humanity, there are two things we need to start to pay closer and closer attention to. At least I am. The first thing is what is, what makes me happy? What brings me joy? Um, in terms of how I show up in the world, right? So what do I really love to do? What, what brings me happiness? And um, if I can be in that more through service, then I will be at my highest potential. But if I'm continuing to do things that don't light me up, um, but I'm only doing them so that I can continue to make money, then in my opinion, I am continuing to play in old ways and old systems. And I also say to myself, they have got me. And I don't want to be in a world any longer um, that I am a slave to. So as I'm trying to um, allow myself to be in these new ways, I'm allowing my soul to come online. When your soul starts coming online, it's going to rattle you out of all of the ways that you have done things because we are all uniquely designed to do life very differently. We're not designed to all follow each other and to all do it the way that everybody else has done it. It's, um, it's just not how our souls work. 
So if you're watching yourself in that kind of experience right now, just know that it's going to require a, a massive amount of faith and trust. And it will be blind. You, you won't see. You won't know. You won't have somebody come in and say, oh, if you do do dot, 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 that this is going to happen. No one's going to know because this is your own unique path that no one's taken yet but you because it's yours. So if somebody comes in and says, oh, yeah, just do dot, 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 and this is what will happen, well, then you're following somebody else's unique soul path. Fine. No big deal. Just be aware of what's happening. So the first thing is that this, this deep, deep faith in, in finding what brings you joy and just starting to get curious around that. You know, and for me, what has been very interesting is that when I tap into, and then we doubt it, you know, so what I've been tapping into is that going back to Kenya and being with the animals is the only thing my body wants to do. It's, it's where it's my, my soul is calling that. It's like my soul is when I think, when I think into being with the animals in Kenya, I could cry because it's like my bot, my whole system relaxes, my soul relaxes. It's, um, and then I say to, well, my, to myself, well, that makes no sense. What are you going to do? You can't make money. You can't just do that, right? And that's what we do. We will, our soul will say something. Our soul will say, this is what feels highest aligned. This is, and it's a feeling. It's not a thought. You can't say to yourself, well, let me think first. What would bring my high, me my highest joy? Well, if I did this, then I could make this kind of money. Then I could do that. That's not your soul. Your soul doesn't think about money in, when ter in terms of finding joy. Your, your soul will just give you that radar of this. Maybe for you, it is gardening. What's your pure, highest joy gardening? I love to garden. Some people, it will be walking. Some people, it will be um, going to their job and engaging with the people they work with, right? Um, some people, it will be working with children or dancing, or I don't know. There's so many beautiful, amazing, unique ways that your soul feels alive. And the craziest thing about following that is that if you can follow that, you will be shown what's next. You will be given what is next. But because so many of us don't follow that, we don't realize what happens when you follow it. And when you follow it, you've got to follow it, which means that you've got to trust in every moment as you're going in that direction, you're still not going to know. You're still not going to know. And, and there is no outcome that needs to happen other than the fact that you are trusting so deeply in your soul's calling your soul's desire, and you're freaked out because there's not a handbook for that moment in time. And that's when you start practicing as often as you can being okay with whatever decision you make, that there is no right or wrong decision no matter what. What's right or wrong about a decision you make is how you judge the outcome of it. The decision itself is the decision. And many times we don't want to make decisions because we think it's going to have a bad outcome or it, a good outcome. We want the good outcome, not the bad outcome. So I don't really know what one to choose, so I'm not going to choose either of them. And then you stay stuck. And you're designed to be in flow. And the soul doesn't care about decisions. The soul doesn't even think decisions. The soul just resonates with something and that's it. It's the mind and our ego that says, wait, maybe it should be this, maybe it should be that. Well, if I go, then what am I going to do after, after, my, after Kenya? Then what am I going to do? Then what am I going to do? Then you start thinking about how people are going to view you and see you and what are they going to say? And then you've got to let that all go, right? But we're stepping, this evolution in human consciousness is stepping out of all of the ways that we have been doing this life for thousands of years. And so the second piece that I'm trying to get to is, the first piece is, what's your joy? What makes you happy? And, and don't think about it in terms of how, do I, how can I make money? No, 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 no. What makes you happy? What brings you joy? 
you know, and let everything else move around that goalpost and see what happens because your soul will always take care of you. The universe answers through soul, right? And so the second thing you want to pay attention to as you're, as you're stepping into this more and more is that you will find yourself standing around and looking at a large majority of people, humans, that are incapable of being able to just simply follow soul's calling and will be trying to convince you or the rest of humanity to do it a certain way. And so now you're not only are you courageously kind of stepping out of the closet of all of the ways you've done life with this group or that group or these friends or that family member or this, this system or that, now you're st starting to step out of it because you're realizing what actually makes me happy, what makes my soul happy, many times will be out of whatever it is that you're doing. And when you start to do that, then you start realizing, you start to see even more how humanity is still stuck in the ideas that they have to do it the way other people have done it. And they have to follow the way others have done it. And this is when it becomes really interesting. This is when we get a lot of people saying, well, why aren't these people seeing it the same way I am? Or why aren't people changing the way I am? Or how come, you know, my family doesn't understand me or my coworkers don't understand why this or that? The more that your soul calls you into its aligned state, for me, it's been letting go, literally letting go of how I have run my business, which is extremely scary, and trusting that there is a new way that's going to be arising and you're going back to Kenya to hang out with some animals for an indefinite amount of time until you know what's next. And your calling could be very different than that, right? But that's not necessarily the norm for a lot of people that have created a specific life that looks a certain way. So then you have people that are going to share with you um, what's okay about that, what's not okay with that, what's a responsible thing to do, what's a not what's not a responsible thing to do, um, how you'll be more successful if you do this or you'll be more successful if you do that. Um, you know, you should mark it this way, you should mark it that way. you should reach out to this person, you should reach out to that person. you're going to start to notice more and more, the systems. I hate to say the word the matrix because it's just so used up and, and annoying, but you know, this, this world that we are in, this illusionary world that we're in, it's going to start, you're going to start to see all the little glitches in it. You're going to see all the, um, the, the little, the, the wiggly lines between, between humans. Hold on a second. I got new lipstick. I never wear lipstick. I always wear lip gloss. I got some lipstick. I kind of like it. I kind of feel like a clown. But I'm okay with it. 49 years old and finally wearing lipstick instead of $5 gloss, which I love so much. I don't know what got me to buy the lipstick. I was with my mom shopping. She's like, do you need some lipstick? 
I don't know, do I? You know, just something to put on your lips to make him look, you know, have more color. I'm like, I will not take that personally. <laughs> just natural, Lori. We'll get a natural color. You won't even know it's on your lips. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Give me some lipstick. <laughs> And the woman, she was so good. She picked this lipstick out right away because I went over. I don't know how to buy math. I don't know how to buy makeup. I swear to you, I swear to God, I don't know how to buy makeup. And so I was like, there's all these like tubes of lipstick. And I'm like, and they, you know, they have this part open. And I'm like, well, I, I know you don't take this and just put it on your lips because then you put the sample back and everyone else picks it up. Like, how do you do this? I didn't know. I didn't want to look silly. So I just put, I don't, I seriously don't know how you're supposed to do it, but I just put it on my finger and then I put it on my, on my, on my things. So I was taste. I was trying all these different colors. They all looked horrific. My mom's like, no, no. Then the woman comes over, the sales lady, and she's like this one. And she showed me how to put it on. And I was like, freaking genius. What else do I need? Um, I, I have mascara on. I don't wear eyeliner. So I put mask, I put my, bought my mascara. So I put mascara on today. That was fun. I do wear mascara every once in a while, but yeah. Anyway, <laughs> this color is, oh my God, like I'm ever going to. Mademoiselle 434. I'm sure it's not. Yeah, Mademoiselle 434. I'm sure people are going to be very upset that it's the brand that it is, but. Um, yeah, I like it when I'm just, when nothing's on my face. I feel so much better when I have nothing on my face. Oh. I feel like a million bucks. Oh, she put on this, um, the lady at the, at the makeup place, she put on this like, um, foundation thing on one side of my face. And, um, <laughs> my mom, she's like, oh, Lori, all your blemishes are gone. And I'm like, the fuck blemishes. First of all, you mean my natural face? We need blemishes. Um, <laughs> uh, she was like, no, I mean, your face is beautiful, but like all your blemishes are gone and your face is so smooth. And I looked and I was like, holy shit, this is what people have been doing all these years. They put this little foundation on their face and then it just makes it look so smooth. Holy, f I'm not kidding. I was like, what in the actual fuckery? I was, I, then I'm like, oh, no wonder everybody looks like they're, they have the freshest looking skin on the planet. Thank you for the super chat, Gigi. Um, really, I was, and then she put some fat powder on and that even made it better. And I was like, oh, wow. So this is why people wear makeup, changes their face. Literally. 25 years of my life. Oh my God. I will have to show you something. Pause. I'm going to show you this because I think it's extremely important. Hold. I don't even know why I'm going into makeup, but it's because I can't stand wearing makeup. I don't have to wear makeup if someone's like, well, why are you wearing makeup? I don't have to. But every once in a while, like I'm doing my workshop and it, like when lights are on you, it's nice to have makeup on. So I don't buy makeup. I wear literally, I have my moisturizer that I put on and my lip gloss. That's it. That's it. Right? Feel fabulous, darling. Sometimes I'll put mascara on. Rarely do I put mascara on, but if I'm doing some event, I will. Well, I have had this. So when I do go out and do an event, like when I was do, when I was in Europe doing my book tour, 
I had, I had my, um, my moisturizer, which is jojoba oil. That's my moisturizer, jojoba oil. Now I do jojoba oil and castor oil. If you mix jojoba oil and castor oil together and put it on your face morning and night, everything's going to change. Seriously, message me in three weeks and you'll be like, holy fuck, what has just happened to my face? Jojoba oil and castor oil together combined in a bottle, your life is going to change. So that's my moisturizer morning and night. Then if I do have an event, okay, then I put on some powder and this, my friends, is the powder I've had for the last probably 25 years. Like I have very little left. Wait, let's go. It's disgusting. Like I have n hardly any left. But I can't get rid of it because it's the only one that I like. It's the only one that works and they don't sell it anymore. So I'm like, I don't know what to do, but it's probably disgustingly old but I don't care. I hardly put it on my face. And when I, and that's it. And I put that on and I'm off to go the races. And I feel like a million bucks. I can't stand having like people do makeup on my face. I can't stand feeling like I have makeup on my face. Like I can't do it. It's just not going to happen. This is not. So anyway, the super side note about makeup and, um, that's, that's just, that just came out of nowhere. Um, jojoba oil. Yeah. J-O-J-O-B-A and castor oil. Combine them and, um, your life will change. And then what I do, so not only do I put jojoba oil and castor oil together and I put it on my face, but then right before bed, I'll take just the castor oil and I'll dump a little bit on my hand and I'll just lather my face and my neck um, with the jojoba oil. And I mean, sorry, with the castor oil. And I go to bed. I do that every night. Just the castor oil at night on my face. Thick. Um, and what your your skin starts to plump up. Uh, it starts to get life again. I mean, I'm almost 50. So it's like I do hot yoga all the time. So I'm always detoxing. I'm always sweating. Um, but I can get really dehydrated. So the, the, the castor oil just like plumps up your face. It brings your like life back to your face. It's incredible. Um, yeah, it's just really incredible. Oh my God, makeup tips. I, I, it would be a, it would be a disaster. Literally, I don't even know how to put like lipstick on. I honestly don't know. Like when I was at, when I went to the store, I, I actually went to the makeup place because I wanted to see if she could find this color so I could get another one 25 years later. Um, and then I ended up getting a lipstick. Um, I used to put urine on my face a year ago, um, but I haven't done that in a long time, but that's really, really good for your face. Um, what is it? Laura Galler Baked Balance and Lighten Powder Foundation. I love that. Yes, I brought this to the store. How else would she know what color I needed? They didn't have them anymore. She was like, I don't even know where you got that. I was like, I got it in 2000 freaking 10 at a store. Just oils on my wet skin. Yep, just oil. I was not going to talk about Jesus today. Oh, my healing that I got in the bathtub the other day. That was incredible. Um, it hasn't stained my sheets yet. Um, 
No, they don't. It's the weirdest thing. Like, yes, last night a little bit, but it doesn't really, my face just soaks it up. I don't know. It's very strange because my, my other girlfriend was like, my my sheets get soaked. And my mom's like, my sheets get soaked. I don't know what happens. My face soaks it up. It doesn't get, it, do, it doesn't get all weird on my, on my pillowcase. Um, So anywho, for all of you listening that don't want anything to do with makeup, we will move on. We have 15 more minutes. Um, yeah, castor oil is great for everything. The healing in the bathtub. Okay, let's quickly talk about. So first of all, if you don't know, um, I'm a huge fan of, uh, of Jesus, of Jesus, of Yeshua. Um, I have been connected to him, like really diligently working with him since last June. And I don't believe that he is the way to quote unquote God. I don't believe he is the savior. I don't believe that he is some sort of religious figure that we need to bow down to. Um, I see Jesus or Yeshua as uh, a soul that was embodied in a human form that we call Yeshua that walked the planet and was able to master the human experience. He was able to um, integrate and embody soul while human, and he was able to initiate himself into uh, higher dimensional realms while still standing in his physical form. And, um, and so he was an example. He's an example. And that was his purpose, was to show humanity who they are. Never, never to be a religion. Never, never to be somebody to be worshipped. Uh, I don't believe that. Um, and I definitely do not believe that he is the way to God. <laughs> uh, and any communication and connection that I've ever had with him, he has never, ever, ever communicated that with me. So I've been with him. He's And I've been asking him to help guide me through the, these past six, seven months because I've been committing more and more to walking in the path that he walked, like committing my life to the, the soul mission that was similar to what he had. And so I'm always calling him into my space. I'm always asking him to show me, show me what I need to see, show me what's next, show me the initiations I need to have. Um, and they're not always fun. You know, there's definitely been moments, especially if I'm traveling, where I really get my ass kicked. And he's right there, like, this is, these are the initiations. Um, and so the other night, I really wanted to work on some stuff that had been blocking my ability to be in a more clear or aligned place. I won't go into the details because they're very personal. Um, but I knew that these things were hindering my ability to be at the highest level of awareness for my own service to humanity. And I work best connecting with Jesus in the bathtub because he comes through so much more clear for me. And, um, and so when I got into the bathtub, I was sitting sideways on, in the bathtub. Actually, was, I was not taking a bath. It was a shower coming down. Um, and I was sitting sideways and I called him in. I feel him immediately when I call him in. I can feel him. He's a presence that you can just feel. And I closed my eyes and I prayed out loud for him to come to, to come to me and to assist me in um, releasing this, getting rid of this, uh, healing this, taking this from me. Two different things. And this had never happened before, but he came through and he started speaking out loud through me. I wish I had it recorded. It was so powerful. He was praying over me, but his but he was praying over me through my voice. And it was just going and going and going and going. And it was firm and authoritative and demanding and heartfelt and open and I knew I was receiving like this miracle moment. I knew it was a miracle moment. 
And then he was done. I could feel him standing outside the bathtub and he was done. And, um, and he says, is there anything else? And, uh, I said, yes. And so I closed my eyes and opened up the prayer for the last thing that I wanted assistance with. And, um, and he came in again and spoke, prayed for me, with me, but through my mouth, through me. Um, so he started to speak, right, and say this prayer. And it was um, life-changing. Like the things that I had prayed about were unraveling. And because they're pretty personal, I'm not going to share them right now. I'll share them later. But um, it's pretty miraculous what started to happen afterwards. Um, and yeah, I don't take it lightly that we have the ability to connect with really beautiful um energies on the planet right now that can assist us. Um, you know, so yes, I think a lot of us understand that his real name was not Jesus. I think we get that a lot of us. Um, I think back in the day they called him Yeshua in some capacity and way in which it was expressed, spoken, written. But for the sake of 2024, I say Jesus. Semantics. People like to get really into semantics. Anyway, that's one of my Jesus stories. And um, it's been an interesting path walking with him more and more. Very, very different. That's why when the Galactics were coming in for the workshop, I was like, oh, wow, I had no idea. Here they come. Massive amount of galactic energy coming in. And there's a lot of galactic energy um, coming onto the planet trying to assist us, also trying to remind us. You know, galactic energy doesn't have any um, frequency of fear. It doesn't have any frequency of um, uh, divided story. It just won't. Galactic energies don't play in that field. It's a very straightforward kind of energy, the galactics. They're very, um, most galactic energies are very um, middle way. They're in the middle. They're the middle way. They don't have an opinion other than um, the clarity of what humanity is going through and their capacity to be able to assist based on the universal laws that uh, earth holds and the universal laws that are held in each soul. Yay for the galactics. All right, you guys, that's it for today. I don't even know what I talked about. Um, does anybody have a quick question about what they're going through right now? I'll spend a couple a couple questions, a couple minutes answering a, a specific question. Um, never heard of the Galactic Embassy. Sounds like a cool name. Um, I like the middle way. Me too. Not easy. Middle way is not easy. Any quick question before I go? I have to jump into our Align 7.0 class. We are on day 19. I don't even know what song I'm going to play. <laughs> the exhaustion is so much because um, your body is holding much more light and the light that's coming down onto the sun is much more, um, it's a much higher frequency. So there's an exhaustion because there's a speeding up of the energy that's coming down onto the planet. There's a speeding up of the energy that's moving into your body. And so your body is learning how to um, acclimate and assimilate that energy. And so it's exhausted. The body's exhausted. That's what, I mean, all of us can barely do anything anymore. We're like, I'm going to go to the grocery store and then I'm coming home and I'm exhausted and I'm going to rest the rest of the day. 
It's not because the there's something wrong with the body. It's literally the increasing of frequency on the planet based on the frequency that the sun is beaming down on the planet. It's increasing. It's speeding up. Imagine if you were in an ocean and you got caught in a rip current, right? You're going to be exhausted trying to figure out how to be and rest in that rip current. There's a lot going on. Your body is starting to learn how to acclimate and assimilate these really high frequencies that are in the body and it creates a lot of exhaustion. Anything else before I go? Is there a way to adapt better to the incoming energies? Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. <laughs> Whatever that means for you, slow down and shut off the distractions. Any distraction that you know is a distraction, turn it off as much as you can. Be in nature. I mean, literally slowing down and just focusing on what slowing down means for you is going to be, it's really, really important right now. I don't know anything about a life path number. I'm not um I'm not too adept at those. Lots of weird dreams. Yeah, why am I having constant déjà vu? It feels like almost every moment of every day has happened before. When we start to integrate higher frequencies within the body, we start to access uh different timelines, we start to access different realities. Um, and so when you have deja vus, it's almost as if you are um, moving in between uh, different uh, um, possibilities. So it's like this happened or this could have happened or this would have happened or this, you know, so when you have like a deja vu, you're popping into a, a reality that had the opportunity to uh, happen or the opportunity did happen right? And now you're meeting that opportunity and you're realizing through the lens of uh, the quantum field that that opportunity that you're now having has always been there. And now you're seeing that that opportunity while you're in it. Quantum field is wild. It's where everything exists at all times. So when you start really accessing the quantum field, it can get very trippy, can get almost psychotic, like, wait a second, like I'm losing my mind, you know? Many, many times throughout the day, you may even find yourself like, am I even in this world? Like, am I here? Sometimes you'll feel like you're just like a, a character and people can't see you. Have you ever had that happen where you're like walking around and you're like, I don't, I'm pretty sure no one can see me right now, you know, or you're, you're having a conversation, but you know that you're not really having a conversation. It gets really trippy. It can get really trippy. The sun feels much hotter to me, <laughs> yes. The sun feels much brighter to me right now than ever before. But it's not just after the solar eclipse. I was noticing that before the solar eclipse. The sun has been getting more um, intense, more bright, much brighter the past couple of months. Um, anything else before I go? Um Dr. Yi says, we all think we have adult ADHD, but we have technology addictions. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of adult ADHD. Um, thank you. From fertility to delivery. Thank you for that super chat. Your free meditation, tons are next level. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you are not on my, um, if you guys are not receiving my um, email that goes out every Sunday, it's... Uh, it's called Divine Downloads. It's a divine download, and it goes into your inbox every Sunday. And uh, there's a little note from me sharing my experience with life and a free meditation. I think we have about 30 of those free meditations up right now. And all of them are very unique and very different. And so if you want to join the newsletter, I believe the link is down in the description. It's free to join the newsletter. And um, every week you'll get a free, you'll get a new uh meditation in your in your inbox and they're they're pretty cool all right you guys i love you i got to get into my align class i'll see you next tuesday Mwah. thanks for being here